In my other videos, uh, we've done a lot with this lathe, and uh, a lot of the things that I did involve drilling holes. And people have seen this handle that I put on the tailstock and asked about it and asked if I had plans for it, and the answer is no, I don't have any plans. But uh, I had so many people ask me, I figured I would just take it apart and show you what it is. It's very simple. It's almost completely made out of one inch by quarter inch flower stock. And this piece is also a quarter inch, but this is a, a flat plate with a, an angle plate. But I'll give you, take it apart and I'll give you the dimensions of this and you can make one for your own lathe if you want one. I put this on here probably 20 years ago when I had a job to drill a lot of holes and somebody suggested I do this and I tried it and I really liked it. So then I took it off and put the wheel back on. But I did that about three times and I never put the wheel back on. It hasn't been on there in probably uh, 15 years. So this is what I use. So we'll take the whole thing right off so we can show you every part. See if we can get it to drop down through. There. Now I can pull this right off of here. We'll bring it over to the bench over here. This is a great help to be able to clear the, the bit within a, you know two seconds and it keeps you from ringing off the drills in the part. So the first thing you have to do is make a plate that fits on your tailstock that you can bolt this to. And what I did was I put it on with four bolts, tapped them in there, and this has a slot in it to hold this. And this is also bolted in. So uh, let me get a tape measure here. This one is, is roughly uh, one and three quarters by two and a quarter. It's all a quarter inch plate. Now, uh, another dimension is the distance out is four inches, very simple. So this dimension is four and a quarter. And this dimension is six. As you can see, it, it has nice action. The total arm is 20 inches long. As you'll notice, if you look down here, you'll see that the wooden part extends out more than the, the, the oak. It's six inches beyond, so the, the metal bar is 14, and then I added another six with the wooden bar, because that's nice, nice to grip. It's bolted on through bolted down at the bottom so you don't see that. Now you're probably wondering what is this pin doing in here? Okay, what that pin does is you know to eject the chuck or the, the live center, you have to turn this backwards. So I have this pin that just drops in there and it fits in a hole in here and I can run this backwards and eject that because that's a left-handed thread on the other end of this. Now this piece I had to make, this rod, and I'll have to take that out of there to show it to you. But you have the fork here to fit the quarter inch slot and a pinhole. I originally had a bolt in there. You notice this pin is smaller than that, so you probably want to do it because you probably want one of these pins. Because what happens is you, you lose it if you don't keep it where you see it all the time. And that's, without that it doesn't work. So it's right there when I take it out. I can just eject. You gotta make Now these are metric bolts. It's the original bolt pattern. It was already in there, so you don't have to tap these holes. This is the original plate that was on there, so I use that as a pattern to put these bolt holes in with. left-handed thread so I'm unscrewing this and there it is what I did is I made a, a, a threaded piece with a left-handed thread on it and I silver braised it onto this shaft just that short piece of left-handed thread and it matches the thread the original thread that was on the uh, hand crank another piece you have to make is this fork and I'll unscrew it and show it to you it's a very simple item I don't think you need a plan for this
just screws on the end there any thread i think i've got like a probably a half inch fine thread on there or a little larger i can measure it this shaft is exactly a half inch so the thread is is three eighths fine thread this is the fork on there. And I didn't realize at first that I couldn't use the fork to eject the part. And uh, I would stick a screwdriver in there and try to undo it. And of course, you're unscrewing this when you're ejecting it so it comes undone. So I drilled this cross hole here. And the cross hole is what I use to eject the the chuck and the uh, live center with. And then of course you have to make this plate. I put a bronze bushing in it, so it slides easy. And these holes are oversized, and I marked it up, so I know which way is up every time. Because when you put this on there, you have to run this all the way back and then tighten your bolts. Because if you don't, this won't be right and it, it won't line up, it'll jam a little bit. So you pull it all the way back, tighten the bolts, and you'll be all set. I might as well oil this up while I got it apart. Get it nice and clean. Oh. Where's my up? There it is. Now these are the original bolts. They're metric. So I didn't have to re-tap those. Put them in very loosely first. Now, I'm gonna draw this all the way back. You see it jams there? So I, I get a little too tight here, it isn't, it isn't moving. Now I'll tighten it with it all the way back. Nice and easy. That's all there is to it. Very simple mechanism. Like I say, don't forget to drill your cross hole so you can back that out of there. I'm gonna put this back together. And, okay, uh, next week uh, we'll do a video on how I put this on here. It's a pretty simple operation, but uh, it's it's very important for me to have be able to tell the depth of my holes. And that's this is this thing works out perfect.
So what are the advantages of having this lever here? It's only for drilling. Uh, I do a lot of drilling of small holes and large holes. And one of my complaints about the wheel is to clear the hole, you have to back the thing all the way out and then back it in. It's, it's quite slow. But this, you can drill in and then just snap it out like that very quickly and clear the thing within a, probably two seconds. And if you don't clear the drill enough, you can actually wring the drill off. And I drill, sometimes my pile of holes are only an eighth inch. And if you don't clear that about every 50 or 60 thousandths, it's going to wring the drill off in your part. And that's no fun, especially in brass. It's tough. So when I drill a hole, I drill a pilot hole. I try to use the, use a sixteenth if it's, it's a fairly good size hole. And then I step up a sixteenth at a time till I get all the way up to one inch yeah, because this uh, belt driven lathe isn't real powerful. I can't take a, a one inch bit and plow through there with a quarter inch hole with a quarter inch pilot hole. It just, it won't do it. It'll stall the lathe. So I go up maybe a sixteenth or an eighth at a time. If you uh, liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel and give us a thumbs up.